Welcome to Kansas City Real Talk, brought to you by KCRIR. I'm Bobby Howe. And I'm Alex Gehring. What up, Alex Gehring? Not a whole lot. How are you doing? Well, um, I think you're doing a little bit better than me. Oh. Because, uh, y'all, we have a huge congratulations to uh, offer up to Mr. Alex on receiving the Kansas Association of the Year Realtor of the Year Award. Woo! Amber's going to fill this in with some <laughs> clapping, some fake clapping, all of that. Sound we effects? got it going. Sound Whoa! Like, yeah! Oh, sh- she was ready to go, and I didn't even know wow. for that. That's how amazing our wow. producer Amber is, y'all. It's great. <laughs> it sounded like we had a live audience for a second. I know. Also, I'm exciting. apparently very Southern today. I keep saying y'all a lot. <laughs> it's fine. So tell us, give us your acceptance speech. Oh. Um, well, first of all, <laughs> no, I don't want to give my acceptance <laughs> speech. What a ah. weird thing to do. I, I did say that it feels really strange I don't know if I said it quite like this. It's a little bit strange to get Realtor of the Year when everybody had to step up the way that they did during, uh, you know, all of 2024. Um, and going through everything that the industry went through, especially the people that, I mean, you know what those rooms are like. Yep. I mean, these people have given a ton of time and a ton of energy um, and a ton of leadership um, during this year. Yeah. Um, and so it meant a lot. Um, and... Uh, I was I was really thrilled about it, but and I know that you this resonates with you too. But these people that contribute the amount of time that you do and that I do and that so many of our friends and colleagues do, um, the only reason why we're able to do it is because we've got incredible support systems um, at our house, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and also uh, in our offices and in our companies, and it's a. Uh, uh, it's definitely a group effort. So you don't yep. you don't get something like that uh, alone. And there have been a lot of people that have uh, helped with that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Not yep. any none of us um, succeed alone. No, we succeed through and by others who build us up, support us, and fill in the gaps yeah. whenever we miss things because so, so, there's a lot of things to get missed. So for real, this is an important story. I guess yesterday, yesterday morning. Um, I had to do a, a quick schedule change. So I teach a practice course, part of a, a new license practice course. Um, and I teach forms, uh, the forms portion of the practice course. And I had to ask somebody to uh, step in in the middle of my form session um, and do a bit that they usually do later in the day so that I could leave my form session in the practice course and run and go be on a panel for the Kansas Association and then run back and finish the rest of my form session. And like you you don't get to do those things if you don't have incredible people that are around you that can fill in those gaps and make these things work because people like you and I overcommit ourselves and it doesn't affect me at all, which is totally unfair. Like, I can run and go do that and then come back and do my form session and not be impacted. Right. Like, I can I can switch gears, like, in a heartbeat and it's not a problem. But what's totally unfair about it is that not everybody can do that and people like us have to ask people to do that on our behalf yes. all the time. And so to have people in your, uh, in your circle and in your orbit who are able to do that is such a blessing. Yes. Um, and it's amazing. So Well, it, it, you say that and I just started laughing because that's how I was at Missouri Realtor Meetings last week um, down in Branson was very much the same thing where it was like there were multiple times I needed to clone, but I was in this room for so many minutes. Then we ran over here and yep. did this. And then we had to go up and run, a, you know, record a podcast with someone. And then, but, but the thing is, the thing that I think fills my heart the most is that whenever I ask someone to step up for me, I don't think that I have ever had someone whine or complain no. or just even like, oh, okay, I guess. Like, it's just, sure, how can I help? What can I do? And yeah. they just rush right to it. And I think that just knowing that that support system is out there makes all the difference of the world and even including my amazing family yep. um, because I recently was like, I overcommitted. I, I need you guys to help me with this. I'm like, no problem. We got this covered. You just keep doing what you're doing. Okay. There you go. Yep. It's good. Well, anyway, so thanks. Great job. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
All right. So what, uh, it says election day is coming up on November 5th. It's a very good we said that because I would have had no idea from all the wow. texts that I get. How, yeah. do, how does your text uh, stream look right now in regards to politics? So my text stream, I get uh, I get text messages from everyone. Yep. Um, which is not not a lot of fun. No, at, same. At all. For, for a variety of reasons, not just because of the volume of messages, but it's not a lot of fun for a variety of reasons. Um, it, not to talk about politics, but sometimes I get messages from people and I'm like, somebody's messing with me. Right. How did I get on this list? Um, <laughs> yes. I don't know what's going on. Did you do that? I was, you just gave me a look. Did no. you add me onto a list? No, because I've thought the same thing. Because I'm just like, ha. Huh? And then I realized, Bobby, you've given to our pack yes, so exactly. many times. And all those roles, all those donations for both sides yep. show up. And so that's how you know Alex and I are fairly independent voters because we get the text from both sides in yes. all of this. And the last time, last night, I was looking Ooh. through my phone and like the ones that actually, you know, you can just read on one screen without scrolling. I had one actual text to me as someone I was responding back to and literally the entire screen was all political text otherwise. And I was like, oh, this has got to stop. Oh, it's awful. And I'm sorry, but we uh, politicians need to get a grip and understand that um, and it's not politicians, it's their campaigns need to get a grip. And start to follow can spam laws. Yes. And they need to check themselves. They are going to get some little old lady conned because she's going to be so used to receiving these messages that are real. And then she's going to get some that are fake. It won't even be a real candidate. And it'll just be somebody asking for a dollar. And they'll present themselves as the right political party. And they're going to get that dollar. They might get a hundred. And it's not cool. They, it's we're making people extremely susceptible to fraud like that and, yep. and cons like that. So anyway, scams, well, scams. It, that's what I'm looking for. It's funny because I was just thinking about the Can Spam Act just the other day while I was walking my dog, and I'm like, I know I'm signed up to be on the Do Not yeah. Call list and the Do Not Disturb list, and yet for whatever reason, political parties and campaigns still somehow feel like they have a right to reach out because they do. No, you don't. They do. They don't. They. I know they do, but, but they don't they actually do. Like that's what I was. Do, I was joking with Andrew about it. It's like you know when he was when he was on. It's like yeah, what's it feel like to not have to not have to follow those rules? It's right. nonsense. They need to check themselves. They're going to get somebody in in trouble. So yep. anyway, um, we... so who are you voting for? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is a great story though. When uh, we <laughs> we were talking about realtor safety month, yeah. as one does um, uh, in September. And uh, I was at my uh, sales meeting and I played a, I think I told you, I played a clip of, of uh, Carl Carter. He had, he had a video on YouTube that Carl. was really impactful. Um, so I'm talking about uh, Beverly Carter and we're talking about realtor safety in my sales meeting. And one of my agents uh, raises their hand and, and she can, you know, I, she knows how to give me a bad time. Mm -hmm. And this is, by the way, the day of the presidential debate. Okay. Okay. So she raises her hand and I call on her and I'm thinking, oh no, because she had that look on her face that like, hmm, she's going to get me kind of look. And she goes, so Alex, how do you feel about conceal and carry? And can we, you know, what do you think about uh, realtors carrying guns. And I'm like, I'm not answering that question right now at all. I'm like, you're going to ask me who's going to win the debate next? Like, what? I'm not opening that can of worms, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, it yeah. was uh, the the realtors know how to get you, don't they? They do. The 100%. They know how to play. So just so you know, as we mentioned, election day is coming up on November 5th. If you're not sure whether or not you're registered or if you need to find out your polling place, you should visit vote.org as a great resource to find out all of those things. There you go. Who are we bringing on today, though? Uh, we are going to bring on our good friend. Such a good friend. Derek Ramsey. He's the man. I don't, is, think, that's his, I don't think that's his job title. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Derek <laughs> Ramsey is the vice president for realtor advocacy at KCRAR. Uh, he works closely uh, alongside Jeff Carson, That's who right. is a, a common uh, substitute co-host. That's right. He is extremely jealous uh, of Derek at this moment. Derek is going to talk to us about some of the candidates ready for office at the local and state level and also talk about their stances on housing-related issues. Um, when we visit Topeka... It's 
it is actually surprisingly refreshing because we have a Democratic governor and we have a Republican majority Congress, right? Mm -hmm. Both chambers. And um, when they talk about one another, when Laura Kelly talks about uh, Masters, Ty Masterson, and when, when Ty Masterson talks about Laura Kelly, they talk about each other with respect. They talk about each other as though they are friends, and they could not be further from one another politically. Right. But you can tell that there's some level of respect. Yeah, and um, I think that uh, we could learn a lot from looking at states like ours. That you know, yeah, and that's yeah. how it should be. We're going to agree to disagree, but we're still going to respect each other at the right. end of the day. And I feel like we have a lot of respect that's missing right I now. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, hey, do you have a book bit today? It's um, a thing you do sometimes. It's just sometimes. And yeah, I do. Wow. Do, 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 do. Bobby's book bit. Casey. I regret ever starting that. <laughs> Because I can't stop it now. So my book bit is one that I had actually wanted to read for a very long time and kept putting off. And it's I Was by Steve Wozniak. Um, and it's his autobiography um, from his early tinking with electronics in his home to single-handedly creating the world's first desktop computer, the Apple One, and founding what would later become the most valuable company in the world. And I'm wearing like a million devices thanks to <laughs> – Steve Wozniak right now on my body. Did you have body. an Apple One, Bobby? I do not. Did you? No. As if you had one. No, I had the one, the the colored one, the one screener, the what was that? The, the iMac. The iMac, the yes. IMAC. I had the yeah. iMac. That was the first one that, that I had. So it's all good. So whether you're listening to these words right now, whether it's on a desktop computer, a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone, that only exists because of Waz's works and innovations. He literally changed our entire world. So there are three lessons from the book. Oh, I forgot my quote. My quote is from Steve Wozniak. Artist work best alone, so work alone. And I work really good alone. <laughs> Maybe it's a single child of me, but I don't know. I was like, that quote really speaks to me. So the first lesson from the book, your home shapes who you are more than you think. Um, Steve's father, Francis, worked at an electronics company. And because of his father's job, the Wozniak home was packed with resistors, cables, all kinds of gadgets, making it the perfect space to tinker around. So he adopted most of the values that would shape his later life um, during this time, such as honesty, fairness, kindness, and having a sense of humor. Your childhood matters whether you like it or not, so it's best to embrace it and make the best of what you've got. The second lesson from the book is if the world doesn't teach you well, well, just teach yourself. Colorado University in 1968, where the computer science program taught by Fortran, which is one of the basic computer languages, because that wasn't enough for him, Waz started teaching himself and experimenting with six other programming languages. However, thanks to a knack for his pranks, his activities cost the computer science department a lot of money, five times their budget, to be exact, and they also weren't too fond of him for hacking the university computer system, and so he was put on probation. <laughs> He transferred in 1969, but without the funds to build his own computer, he kept teaching himself by redesigning existing computers. Eventually, he managed to build his first computer machine, the Cream Soda Computer, which was really just a circuit board, but an actual usable computer nonetheless. If the world doesn't teach you what you want to know, teach yourself. When there's a will, there's a way. And finally, lesson three, one thing you'll never regret is staying true to your own values, no matter what the consequences are. People often wanted Waz to move into Apple management, but he always refused. He was an engineer at heart, and that meant he kept wanting to engineer things. That's why he waited a long time to leave his job at HP, even while working at Apple, and retained a low-level engineering position there throughout his entire career. He stayed honest along the way, even offering his bosses at HP rights to the first Apple prototype and only moving on with Apple once they rejected them, which is a move that saved Apple millions of dollars in potential lawsuits later on. No matter what they are, staying true to your own values is something you'll never regret in hindsight, even if the consequences aren't always pretty. And that's I Was by Steve Wozniak. Nice. Yeah. It's a great, it was a great read. I really loved it. Well, speaking of uh, Wozniak, should we get Derek Ramsey in here? You guys are very compatible. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Bring him on in. Security First Title has Kansas City covered. 
For Security First Title, there is no bigger mission than helping customers obtain their dreams of property ownership by protecting their property rights. With over 80 years of experience, their team is ready to assist with all residential and non-residential transactions. They're the industry leader you want just down the road. With 14 Security First Title locations around the KC Metro, when you call, Security First answers. For more information and a full list of locations, visit securityfirst.com. That's security, the number one, st.com. Welcome back to Kansas City Real Talk, brought to you by KCRIR. Bobby and I are here with Derek Ramsey. Derek. Hello. Welcome back to the pod. It's been a while. Thanks for having me. How long has it been? I don't know. Did we ever like, figure so that out? So for those people out? who do not remember who you are, tell us a little bit about you and how long you've been at KCRIR and why they let you stay. <laughs> uh, so I am the uh, government affairs director uh, for the Missouri side here at KCRIR, and it's my job to work with elected officials at the local, state, federal level um, and their staff to make sure when uh, that government entity is, is talking about housing issues uh, that our, our viewpoint is, uh, is considered. Um, I have been here about half my life. Uh, I started in 2001 um, in, when we were still two boards, um, and uh, they, they haven't changed the locks on me yet. So as long as my lock keeps working, I'll keep coming in. <laughs> And do you enjoy what you do? I do. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the people I work with. I enjoy getting to know uh, realtors. I am constantly uh, amazed by your um, tenacity and and your ability to, uh, you know, be able to survive just eating what you kill. Um, I... I'm not sure I would survive in that in that situation. I, I, I like my paycheck. I like my benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, these are things that uh, that, that you guys don't always uh, uh, don't always have. And so it's it, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, conscious and respectful of that and what you guys do. But for the other side of that, we appreciate everything you do no so kidding. that we don't have to know all the things <laughs> that you have to know. Yes. Um, so the election's coming up. That's why we're having this episode right now. Tell us a little bit about the Kansas City Realtor Party and how it determines which candidates to support, because I know that's always gets a, a thing out there. That's not my candidate. I don't like them. Let's talk a little bit about that process. Well, with, you know, 13,000 members, we're not yeah. going to get them all to agree on, on, on a candidate to support, right, or, or the color of the sky for that matter. Um, so uh, the way we approach elections um, we have a, a, a board of trustees, RPAC trustees, the Realtor Political Action Committee. Uh, members donate funds to that either through dues billing. Do they um, donate or do they invest? They invest. Um, I only say that because back the, – the reason I'm stopping this is because back in the day when we still had a St. Joseph Regional Association of Realtors, we put out uh, these sweatshirts that if you were a – that were major donor sweatshirts. And I just, I remember NAR through a huge, they're not donors, they're investors. We don't use the word donate anymore. You invest in this. And so that's just, when I hear the word donate with RPAC, like it just, that's a PTSD moment for me and it's very triggering. And so. Hopefully NAR is not listening. So well, they they'll, might be. They'll, they'll let that one <laughs> slip. Um, so we, we receive investments through dues billing, through, um, uh, the auction that we have each year, we'll have three or four other fundraisers uh, to raise funds to support the Realtor Political Action Committee. Uh, we have a board of trustees um, on both the Missouri and the Kansas side who um, uh, vet the candidates. Um, if, if it's a local race, we'll, we'll interview the candidates or we'll, uh, we'll, we'll send them surveys. Um, we try to get to know the candidates through, uh, you know, their websites and, 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 and other means. So we have some good information going in to give the trustees when they decide uh, who is worthy of our support. Um, and, and we really don't care if they're Republican or Democrat. We don't care about their position on abortion. That's not why we're here. Um, our issues and what we focus on are strictly uh, housing related. And... Uh, I know that things are a little bit different when you're in Kansas and when you're in Missouri, um, but at the national level, we talk a lot about how bipartisan our PAC is, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about how bipartisan we are in uh, in Missouri and, and Kansas um, and uh, why those numbers uh, skew that direction? Uh, so most 
local elections, which is most of what we deal with here specifically um, as a local association, uh, are nonpartisan. So, so you don't go in having a, a predetermined opinion about a candidate based on the D or the R behind their name. I mean, they're traditionally nonpartisan, but doesn't it seem like some local elections are progressively becoming more and more partisan? They are. And, and that's, you know, there are candidates that want you to know if they're a Democrat right. or a Republican. Um, at the state and federal level, they do run um, uh, under, their, under their party platform. So, um, so right now we're in a, a state election year. Um, most of our local stuff happens in the off years. Um, so this is uh, 2024. Our, our state uh, reps and senators are up for re-election. Um, we look at their voting records from the state. Uh, our, our state lobbyists, Sam Licklider and Mark Toom in Kansas, do a very good job of keeping us informed, letting us know um, which candidates have supported our issues um, and, and, and which candidates they, as the state lobbyists, think would be best for us over the next two years, um, which I think is, is important, you know, we we will we'll learn everything we can about the candidates. We'll vet them um, and and have discussion about them. But ultimately, I, I think in a state year, it's our job to send candidates to send elected officials to Jeff City and Topeka, whom our state lobbyists have identified as people they want to work with. I don't want to send somebody that Sam you know, despises or has a bad relationship with to Jeff City, have that guy introduce a bill that, that Sam then has to fight. Um, right. You know, we national, state, local, we are we are um, uh, all pretty united in that. And so I think it's our job to help uh, our state, uh, not only our state elected officials, but our state lobbyists as much as we can. And these processes definitely favor incumbents, right? The, the yes. way that we go through things, they, they favor incumbents. Can you talk a little bit as to why – uh, we have a tendency to favor incumbents. I think it's I think it's easier to deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't. Um, you know, campaigns are are just that they are they are campaigns, and and you're going to hear uh, the best or or the you know the the most positive thing that that that, that individual can say about themselves. Their their photos are going to be the prettiest photo they've ever taken. Um, you know, their 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 mail pieces are all going to be spelled correctly and punctuated correctly. And they're, they're going to <laughs> convince you that they're really intelligent and they're the right person to go. And, and so it takes a little more digging to find out, you know, whether or not a lot of the, you know, promises that they make in, in, a, in a campaign uh, are something that they're going to be able to follow through with. So who are some of the candidates running in November that you think would be good supporters uh, for the real estate if they were elected? So we actually, on the, on the Missouri side, we have six um, candidates who are realtors um, who are running. Um, the one that, that, that rises to the top of mind is uh, Chris Brown mm -hmm. up in uh, Kansas City North uh, Liberty Northland. area. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris is a realtor. His wife is a realtor, runs their team. Um, Chris has been uh, amazing for us in Jeff City, um, sponsors a lot of our, our legislation um, and, and has gotten a few things through. Uh, and that's, you know, having somebody that you don't have to spend an hour explaining why they should, uh, you know, feel one way or the other about housing issues and real estate uh, really lets you cut to the quick. Uh, uh, you know, our, our meetings with Chris are – you know, we talk and he goes, yes, 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 I got it. Yep. And and then he goes to Jeff City and does it. Uh, he's very well respected by his peers. Um, he's become a leader in the house and uh, we're very lucky to have him. Yeah. I know I know Chris well through his wife. Um, yeah. And uh, the, yes, he's been a great representative for us. I, I was happy when he left being a teacher to go be a politician. Like, yes. It was yes. A good. <laughs> he's been great. Anyone else? Um, Dean Van Shyok. Uh, is up in Savannah. He mm -hmm. is also a realtor. Dean um, has been in the house, I want to say three terms now. Um, kind of a quiet leader, yep. uh, but, a, but a really good guy. Um, he's, he's another one that I would point out. Um, Anybody on the Kansas side? We're just ignoring Kansas. No, you're, you're on the Missouri side, though. That's true. That's, that, we need to get Jeff Carson in here that we keep referring to. <laughs> there's this guy, there's this guy, I can't remember his name, is it, it 
it I feel like it something like it's right Bandrew there. Ball. Band 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 Bandrew Band, Ball. Ball. Is there a he like I think he's a realtor, maybe? I've heard of the name. Yeah. Bandrew Ball. Yeah. Is yeah. is it is that is Mandrew All? Oh, Mandrew. Andrew, Andrew oh, Mall, yeah, I believe it. Or maybe it's Andrew Mall. Oh, oh hey. Andrew Mall, that guy. There it is. There it yes. is. That's why this is my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Andrew Mall, obviously uh, a great realtor, very um, uh, involved, um, actually is our incoming president has served at the state level as, as president. Um, you know, you, you can't go to an event that, that, that Andrew doesn't show up and, and smile and shake your hand and, and make you feel welcome. Um, and Andrew is running for Senate um, against an incumbent, uh, an incumbent um, Republican. Andrew's running as a Democrat. Um, it's a tough race. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, taking down... Uh, an incumbent it, uh, and his 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 opponent is a um, he's a former weatherman. Right. So a lot of people, you know, yep. remember turning on the news at ten o'clock and 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 listening to him. So Andrew's working very hard. Um, we're working hard for him as well, and um, he's he's running a great race. Some people I know out in that area say they see his stuff all over. Um, that he's uh, very visible, um, and they like what he's saying. It's it's going to be a tough race, but you know. Andrew's a tough guy. There so you go. I expect this to be really close. I love it. So uh, before we brought you in, we were talking about uh, the vice presidential debate. And I know that that's not necessarily what you're focused on, but I also know you well enough to know that that you um, you might not love that stuff, but you love that stuff. <laughs> yep. And um, But I, it did strike me as, uh, as wild how uninformed uh, both – vice presidential candidates were on housing policy yes um in general in from your viewpoint and i know that it's outside of what we do as an association we don't involve ourselves in in national races but from your viewpoint doesn't it feel like we have a a visibility problem if uh people at that level don't have a basic understanding not just of supply and demand and, and how to fuel those things, um, but but what's causing the inventory crisis that we're experiencing as a country. What, what do we need to do to get that message out in a more effective way? One of the things that has happened recently is uh, NAR has helped to establish a uh, real estate coalition in, in Congress, in, in the House. Um, and we've got a... Uh, uh, a House member from Western Kansas is the vice chair, uh, and a House member from Cass County here is is the chairman. Mark Alford oh, is wow. the chairman of that of that committee that that coalition. Oh wow! I want to say they have six or eight folks that are signed on now. Okay. Um, it's. I feel like most of what you're hearing in in the debates or or you know in your thirty second soundbite TV ads. Um, are, are quick solutions. They're, here's how I'm going to fix this. There's not an easy and a quick solution to real estate. No, and no. that's why I think when politicians start talking about those issues, um, I don't know that there is a federal fix. There's certainly not a simple one. And it's certainly going to take a lot more than you know, half a dozen members of Congress being in a coalition to to make the kind of uh, uh, the kind of changes and, and give the kind of support that we need at the federal level uh, to really make housing more attainable, more affordable, um, and and uh, not only to to the people that have it, but but you know the people that need it. Well, Derek, the reason why I ask, and and I, I I'm informed enough to not jump to this, but of course, I mean, I'm a Golden R investor. Um, and when I see um, people on the national stage going up and saying just wild things, right, that seem so wildly uninformed, I know that there are members out there who are probably RPAC contributors or who we want to be RPAC contributors who see those things and they say to themselves, where do those funds go if these knuckleheads don't have any idea what they're talking about, right? Um, and so I, uh, I just, I, it, it's just wild to me 
because one of them is a senator and one one of them is a governor, you know, and so we know the senators uh, obviously are talked to about uh, realtor issues uh, through RPAC, and and I assume that that happened uh, to Senator Vance, and I assume that Waltz also has received plenty of communication from realtors uh, during his time as governor. Um, and uh, I guess I'm curious if you have anything else to say about that. I, I think one of the challenges is that that housing really isn't that sexy. Um, you know, the, the the old saying, "If it bleeds, it leads." Um, you're not going to get two. You're not going to get two candidates standing, um, you know, standing on a stage in a debate, saying, "I know more about housing than you do." I know more about housing than you do. Unfortunately, yeah. it's just not that sexy. And, a topic, and it's not something that you can explain away very quickly. You know, you can't say, "Here's here's my plan for housing sure. in a thirty second soundbite." It just it's more complicated than that, and it's just not that engaging. Although it's it's a huge issue um, on on everyone's mind. You know, when you see surveys, it, it always rises to the top. Either either there's not enough of it, or uh, you know, I can't I can't afford it. I I can't I can't you know, realize that that dream of home ownership on a stage, I don't think translates very well. But, but that's where I was going with this. Actually, when you asked the second question, I was going to follow up and you basically went there is that there is no quick solution. But when you're uh, in a debate and when you're on stage, you want to dumb everything down and make it seem like, oh, yeah, I'm so smart. There's a really simple solution to this, as opposed to saying, being honest with Americans, being honest with all of us that this is an extremely complex issue. It's not going to be easy to fix. But the first step is to start doing this and then build on that. They just want to jump to, oh, we're just going to throw some money at everybody. or We're right. going to do this. And that's not the actual solution. But it's really easy to just say on stage without doing any fact checking and going back and seeing, is that even plausible? Right. And also, you're going to find something that makes it sexy that is totally impractical and would never pass uh, no. Congress. So. Ever. Well, I, I believe one of the candidates um, threw out the they were going to give a twenty five thousand dollars tax right. credit, yep. or, or I, I don't think that's the solution. We it's can't, not. It's not. We can't it's throw not. money at this. No, it, we, we have no money to throw work. anywhere. Right. Without even being political, there we have no money to throw <laughs> anywhere. And I also don't think that um, that uh, illegal immigration is what's causing the housing crisis, at least no. in Kansas City. Um, you know, I don't think that that's uh, who's buying up all of the homes no. um, in, in our marketplace. Um, so, uh, like I say, but kind of wild, wild uh, things on both sides. And obviously, I just look at things through the lens of Kansas City. I don't know what's happening in the rest of the country. So, so as we're going through this and we're talking, who are some candidates we would support, and what are some of our issues and things like that? For each election, the Kansas City Realtor Party puts out a voter guide. Can you explain a little bit more about that and what goes into it? Sure. So um, the trustees, as I mentioned, uh, we have a, we have a trustee board in Missouri and a trustee board in Kansas. They get together, they vet the candidates, uh, they decide um, who we're going to support with our RPAC funds, um, and that's great. They love getting the check. That certainly helps their campaigns. But what really helps them is when we can reach out to our thirteen thousand members and say, you know, based on our research, based on our discussions with them, our questionnaires, all of these things we go through, we believe these candidates are the ones you should consider supporting. Um, <clears throat> we've done a version, different versions of, of the voter guide over the last number of years. Uh, this year, we're, we're kind of ramping it up a notch. We're going to have um, an, interact, uh, an interactive map of, of our territory, of our, our entire 40, however many counties. And um, the, they're going to have little pins in, in, on that map. And so as you scroll over that pin, it will pop up the candidate, the district, their website, a photo, things like that of, of, of those candidates. So you can tell who's in your area uh, and, and, and go to their website and learn more about what they stand for. Um, we think that's going to be a, a really good tool um, to uh, – uh, and, 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 and kind of fun. That's fabulous. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of tools that we provide to our members, it actually just made me think about this because it's come up in two meetings I've been in recently. RPR has really great advocacy reports. Yes. Do you ever use that with any of our legislators, and how are you using that if you're using it? 
We take those to Jeff City. Um, the the Missouri Realtors hosts a uh, a bus tour every year. Realtor um, days. They, well, they used to do they used to do it with everyone. Yep. And I, I think some of the uh, some of the elected officials got a little concerned when four hundred realtors descend upon the <laughs> building. So I think at at. There was no missing us. No, <laughs> no. So now we do it individually. Uh, the different boards will go on, on different days. Uh, we'll throw 15 to 20 people on a bus and, and drive to Jeff City and meet with them individually. And that is one of the one of the tools we use. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. yeah if you've never got in there and looked at those, and then it, it goes back to NAR, it goes back to this, but the RPR reports, there is some really good stuff in those advocacy reports. And yeah. NAR is getting ready to flesh out, or RPR is going to be doing even more stuff with them right. coming up. So. It's it's a great tool. But for those people who think they're not going to vote, they've never registered to vote because my vote doesn't matter. What would you say to those people? I I would say that it is uh, that it's our responsibility, you know, as 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 a country. You know, there are there are people living in third world countries and in, in uh, uh, you know communist dominated countries that have literally fought and died for the right to vote. And, and for us, you know, it's, it's getting in your car and, and, and driving six blocks to the local church where, where your polling place is. Um, I think it's important to know the candidates, know the issues, know what you're voting on. But the, at the very least, make the effort to get registered, to vote. Um, and, and, and I think it's just, I think it's part of being an American. Awesome. I love it. Don't you think that uh, a lot of that is made even more difficult on a presidential year? Because I think that a lot of the my vote doesn't matter uh, sentiment um, comes from people who are uh, who, who reside in a state um, where the Electoral College is going to um, wipe out their votes. And that's yep. the perception that they have. And I think that they've heard that so much that they forget about the uh, Senate and they forget about the house. Yeah, all and the they, down ballot candidates absolutely. which are which have so much bigger impact on your life than, you know, who's in the White House. And the electoral college has nothing to do with those candidates. And so if your mindset is that the electoral college wipes out my vote anyway, uh, don't forget about the down ticket items. In 2020, there was a race uh, for the United States House of Representatives in um, Iowa that was won by 6 votes. Wow. 156,000 votes cast in that election. It was won by six votes. Wow. Yeah. So tell so me your vote doesn't matter. It happens. Yeah. yeah. Your vote absolutely matters. Well, Derek, Bobby has one last question for you. <laughs> He's ready. Oh, look at the time. Do I even need to ask my question? What else? What else should we have asked you? What else do you want our listeners to know? What else is out there? Um, I hope that people who listen to this get a little curious um, I think elections are often something I th- you think about every two years, every four years. Uh, a lot of people only think about it during the presidential year. So, um, you know, if, 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 if something we've said today has piqued your curiosity, um, you know, get in touch with me, get in touch with Jeff, get in touch with anyone at KCRIR. We have advocacy committees in both states. We have boards of trustees in both states. Uh, we do a lot of outreach. Um, and uh, the, the, you know, the more hands we have on, uh, on our side, the, the, the better off we are. So uh, would love to have you join us, get involved um, in any way you possibly can. And Derek, don't you feel like, I mean, obviously passion is important when we're talking about these items, but but I do feel like what's more important and what I really um, appreciate about the people who are involved uh, with advocacy in our organization um, is that they um, are able to look at things through lenses. I mean, it's not like people are showing up who don't have any political feelings that are strong, right? People have strong political feelings that are engaged with this, and and it's a a large variety of of political feelings, and yet they come together and they look at things through – a very similar lens. Yes. And um, I, that is a talent. That is a skill that, that takes some time to develop. Um, and do you feel that because we have become more and more polarized, that it's, it's difficult to get people, it's difficult to recruit new people to engage at that level? I think that perception is out there. And, and I, think, I, I think that is a challenge for a lot of industries, a lot of professions. Um, in, in practice, 
it's not for us. Good. Our, our committees, you know, there are people that have served on, on committees for, for 15, 20 years on our advocacy or, or some of the other advocacy-related committees. Um, and they, they frankly, you know, look at everything through a very purple lens. And that's uh, refreshing to me. You know, we don't have to – I don't have to say, you know, that's not appropriate or, you know, that's not why we're making decisions. People on the committee will do it for me. I mean, they will they will make sure that that that, that folks are are doing what they need to be doing to support our advocacy efforts um, at every turn, and um, it's just it's it's nice to see that that sort of realtor party army uh, growing and becoming stronger. I love it. Thank you for your time today. Absolutely, I appreciate the invitation. And just you know, let Jeff know we really enjoyed you here today. <laughs> He can do next year's. <laughs> mm, he wished illness on us so he could fill in for one of us. It's so true. He's, yeah. He said he secretly wishes that w- every time we're recording that one of us will fall ill so that he can step in. <laughs> uh, so here's, I think he'd like it if both of us fell yeah, ill. Here's to your he, good health. That's yeah, all I have thanks. to say. Wait, Derek? See? Derek's now our favorite staff. Wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs>